name we pray. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Greg, for praying for us. I ended up starting the recording a little late in the prayer, but that's all right. I got carried away. It was a, it was a good prayer. <laughs> uh, I do want to thank you guys for being here. And uh, like I said, we're going to continue talking about being the body. And and uh, we 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 did a good job last time in getting all the way through that that first paragraph where he's talking about Christian love and. And so we got to the part where at the end he talked about contributing to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. And I explained that 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 part is talking about giving and, and uh, serving. He's talked mm -hmm. about everything, including worship and and showing love in lots of other ways and uh, showing zeal in your work and not being soulful and, and but now he's then he talks about you know being willing to serve. And so he talks about you know that you, you want to show uh, show love by letting that love overflow. And it wasn't just to the to their uh, their fellow saints. That hospitality wasn't just to the, the saints, but it was also to those outside of the church as well. So you want to let God's love flow on to those outside. And then as he moves in there, he got into verse 14, and he says something that I thought was a, he starts to get into some things that are, uh, he starts it off with an odd verse. He says, bless those who persecute you. And then he reiterates to let you know that he didn't say that by accident. He says, bless and do not curse them. So he wanted you to know that he mm -hmm. he really meant you to, to bless those that, that persecute you. Now that echoes back to something that Jesus talks about in yeah. uh, Matthew 5. And uh, he talks about, you know, praying for those who, uh, who, who, uh, who, who, who abuse you or use you. But he says, yeah, man, yeah. who persecute you. Now, in this Huh? I said, what does bless mean? When I bless it mean that you want to speak good, uh, you want to speak good things to happen to them. You want to pray that God blesses them, that God makes good things to happen to them. You Cursing would mean that you'd want God get them. <laughs> Tam up. That that that's not what he's he said. You want you want to speak God's blessing on them, speak good coming to them. <laughs> He makes sure that you, you you know that he meant that. That's why he put that second part in there. Don't curse him, <laughs> bless him <laughs> to make sure. But but I don't. It doesn't mean that the. Uh... Go ahead. I struggle with that. <laughs> You're not the only one that struggled with that. <laughs> and God showed me something one day that they will. What they sow, God cannot bless bad behavior. Amen. That's if, right. When Israel misbehaved, God cursed them. Yeah. Misbehaves now, God curses them. Amen. That's when right. the children of Christ misbehave, God has to punish. Amen. That's right. So, not. Curse means you're not sowing the same seed that they are already gonna reap. So you blessing them helps you not the curse. That not helps you not participate in their curse. That's right. But he, he, so so to have the mindset that I'm not gonna wish ill on them mm -hmm. keeps you. From acting ill towards them, so then you have to feel the ill you that you've enacted. And, and there's some examples of that uh, that uh, Edomites and the uh, uh, I can't think of the other ones, uh, the Moabites. Mm -hmm. uh, when Israel was being chastised by God. And uh, they got all. Uh, they, they actually they 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 didn't. They not only didn't help. They uh, they did things and and they got excited about. They they were happy about it. They uh, they actually uh, 
They said stuff and they did stuff that would help the enemy instead of helping uh, the, the Israelites. And the real thing was is that those two groups were descendants of Lot. And so that they were really kindreds of, of the Israelites. And God later on punished them because of how they acted when the Israelites got chastised. It's just the same thing that he talked about. Right. <laughs> they could have done nothing. They could have just let it go or at the very least tried to help, you know, the ones that got away or something. But instead of doing that, they, they would get them. And so God got them too a little bit later. So, so you don't want to be doing that. Plus, Jesus tells them in uh, Matthew 5 that you, you don't want to do that. You, know, you want to, you want to uh, pray for those that uh, persecute. Now, when he talks about persecute, that could have been a lot of different things. That doesn't mean that they were going out and uh, picking them up and arresting them and hauling them in. It, it just meant that it could be people that just try to make it hard for you or they they don't want you having service next to them so they uh they made sure that they had to move or whatever but it, it when he talked about persecute that that encompasses all kinds of uh challenges yeah. people well, let's, wait can we look at what we're going on during this time go ahead Paul, which is his, as he was referred to by the Greeks, mm -hmm. or Saul, as he was referred to by his Hebrew people, uh -huh. stopped to persecute Christians. He brought the city to a lot of people's lives. They were being soaked in flammable fluids and used as street lights. The believers were. They were being abused by the evil society and the Jewish hierarchy or the pain to their lives with their corrupt methodology. And so he's saying, don't turn around and be like them. Yeah, they weren't quite uh, the, uh, just a, the wholesale uh, persecution that eventually <laughs> got, but they will start, but it actually started from the Jews. Not from yeah. the, uh, it started from the Jews. The Jews yeah. were the ones yeah. who persecuted them yeah. first. Yeah. The, the mere fact that they had a place called Golgotha Hill yeah. in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the place of the skulls, yeah, that's right. where anybody that didn't just lay down at the feet of their oppressors, mm -hmm. they called it insurrection, they wrote a crime on their cross, and they, crawled, and they crucified. Yeah, that's right. It was persecution all around. Yeah. Really telling them to stop acting like these people. And uh you know, you know, by the way, Lee, the the the, the group that you were talking about was Moab and Ammon. Those were the descendants of Lot. Edomites were the was uh, Esau. Uh, yeah, Esau, yeah, it was Moab. You're okay, right, but, Ammon but, and but, Moabites. But, but the Esau, Edomites did do something, do Israel wrong too, though, when they came to the promised land. And they and got God the got same them. punishment. Yeah, they got, got them for it. Uh, what I was thinking about is that, that uh, you know, when we talk about blessed, what, what the Lord does, he, 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 he doesn't want us to uh, be partaker in another man's sin, right? So mm -hmm. when we get in rejoicing when somebody is doing, uh, is, is, is getting uh, like, what what person when mom when we, we got happy about somebody was getting a whipping, we can we couldn't show too much of joy because uh, she turned around and okay you what you laughing about okay now you go <laughs> you was in on it because uh, it's uh, it's an offense to do yes. that because you know uh, and that's what God's trying to get us from that yes I, I I heard a story told about a woman that got kidnapped by a, a serial killer. Mm. He was an escape, escape murderer, rather. And he was dry, he made her drive. He jumped the car tractor and made her drive all the way from somewhere in the early uh, middle part of Texas towards the Mexico border. During that time, she started praying in her spirit to, to, for, on his, for him, praying for God's mercy on him. 
because she was so assured of, of what she, what God had in her. And that's the thing. Awesome. When we, when we get to be have that relationship with God to the point we are sure that if something happens, we know awesome. what we're doing. You know? She was assured. So her mercy, she instantly mercy and grace came out of her to, upon him. And he started talking to her. And before the end of that journey, not only has she got him converted to the kingdom of God. Yeah. In, and that doesn't happen every day. Somebody take you by gunpoint and 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 kidnap you and tell you to drive and, and was intended to kill. And at the time, she didn't know he was a murderer. She just knew he needed God's mercy. Amen. So that's you know, that's the thing where, where God, reason why I believe that Paul put this scripture in here because it's so easy. You know, somebody make you mad, you want to straight, you want to get them straight, you know. I told you about how I was, man. I was, I was one that, you know, uh, you know, you mess with me, you keep, you mess with me enough, you bag me in the corner, and one of these days I'm going to pay, make you pay for it, and and, and you're not going to even know it, it com it's coming. It's gonna, you won't even see me coming. And that's the way I was. But God had to change that. You know how he changed that? Proverbs 15 and 1. A soft answer turned away wrath. Grievous words stir up strife. He changed it in my mindset. He changed it in my, my talk and my actions. That's how he changed it. Amen. And you notice that this whole thing starts, he starts off in, at 12 talking about changing that mind. And now he's talking about changing the actions. And, and, yeah. and you know, the mind and then change the actions, the results come out different. The other thing about blessing somebody versus cursing somebody, the curse shows out of you. Mm. It has to be in you to curse somebody. <laughs> and to bless somebody shows the presence of God in your life. Mm -hmm. All right. Go back to Malachi. Mm -hmm. It's try me and see that I won't pour you out a singular. Yeah. That you won't have room enough to receive. All right. Anything that can come into your life that your life can contain is the presence of God. Awesome. So when you, when you have the mindset that you want to bless people, you keep the God covering your life. Mm -hmm. And you minimize room for the, the enemy to cause you to so that you don't. Amen. Amen. It is important that we have our mind in the dirt. With the, thing, the things that produce blessings. Amen. And then, when something, when you see somebody sowing rotten, just don't touch it. There you go. <laughs> Stay away from it. That's right. Yeah. And notice that here's what Paul does he starts with that. And then he uh, he helps reinforce what you guys been talking about, because mm -hmm. then he says, "Rejoice with those who rejoice, and mm -hmm. weep with those who weep." So he's told you to bless those who, who persecute you, and, and 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 he's saying, "Don't don't be uh, cursing them, don't be getting excited. Bad stuff happens." He says, "But you do want to rejoice mm -hmm. with those who rejoice, mm -hmm. and you want to weep with those who weep." So he's telling us that also, not only that, but we have to be involved enough with each other's lives that I want to rejoice when you, when something good happens to my brother or my sister. And I don't want to be jealous. I want to rejoice. And that I know that goes against uh, human nature some. It's, it will, a lot of times, well, why didn't something good happen to me? He said, yeah. you go ahead and rejoice that some blessing that they got blessed. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about whether you get blessed or not. Rejoice that they got blessed, that God did this for them. That That's a, a, a very important uh, element that he's wanting to tell us for the church is that we, we're wanting to celebrate the blessings of each other. 
There's a description that talks about press down, they get together. Jesus told the story of the man who had a bountiful crop and kind of passing the blessings of build the big farm. The food in the kingdom of God, scarcity doesn't In the kingdom of the earth, scarcity is magnified because of greed. But when those are blessed and you are around them celebrating, the overflow to you. Yes. Yes. The blessed soul is around. So when you celebrate people who are being blessed, the blessings are around you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Practical things they need to be. Mm -hmm. Practical. <laughs> you be too busy. Yeah. That phrase crab in the barrel. Because mm -hmm. of the crabs, the problem is who put them in the barrel. All right. <laughs> because crabs live in constant protection, yeah. of the ease of being able to eat food and, and be able to safely do it. Mm -hmm. All right. I, and on their own, they get picked off When they together, it's safer for them. But, so it's all in family. However, if you can celebrate those around you being blessed, you in the community where the blesser is. Yeah. That's right. And if you are not selfish as you are being blessed, you share the blessings. Hello. Hello. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hello. Because when you when you add to a positive atmosphere, you receive that 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 same uh, positive um, flow. Uh, when you when you add to a negative atmosphere, you receive that same negative flow. And so <laughs> it's better, you know, just to go ahead and rejoice with that person and do it without without any you know selfish or arterial motives. Because what happens is it. You, you're right. That blessing is like a covering, and it, it comes right up on you. If I like being around people that walk in blessings. Amen. I, and I rejoice with them. I don't feel no no guilt, no jealousy about it. You know, hey, I'm glad that that person, because if I knew that person had a struggle and they came up and were walking in blessings, even if they were doing a hundred times, a thousand times better than me, hey, I'm glorified. Because it's the kingdom that's going for Amen. Not that person. And it's for the kingdom purpose. And then when Amen. I see it that way, praise God, my, I, I, I decrease and God's work, work increases. And that is awesome. That's what I was thinking is that really when you rejoice like that, you, you're celebrating what God has done. And mm -hmm. so you're helping to the, the God's light to shine. You help and give him the glory. So that's another way that we lift up Jesus so that he can draw others to him. So right. when, when we celebrate, mm. then, uh, and so it, it says, you know, rejoice with those who rejoice. But then it also says, weep with those who weep. In other words, that we're supposed to join them in their sorrow and we comfort them by weeping with them. That, that we don't uh, leave them hanging and say, well, you'll be all right. And we go on and, and uh, go out and have a party. We, we, it says that we, we, we comfort them. We be there with them. It's the difference in sympathy and empathy. That's right. Go ahead. Or, or not even being concerned. Goodness. Empathy. And some people get um. We have some politicians who say themselves as empathy is my thing, mm -hmm. but you never do anything about what is causing my pain. <laughs> that ain't me. That's, that's you sending me cow patties and telling me they telling me they telling me they say <laughs> empathy means that you get in the situation with me, no judgment, and you sit with me in it. Yeah. And you help me start the healing journey. Yes. So somebody is grieving. Don't tell them God got a plan. Don't tell them be strong. <laughs> Sit with them. 
and be strong with us. Come on. <laughs> Just cry with us. Yeah. Never be. Yeah. Tell them it's okay to cry. I never forget. I never forget. Um, my one of my first experiences in a hospital. It was a case where this young this woman and her husband lost their daughter. It was a SIDS case. Mm -hmm. They were out there morning getting ready to take family pictures. The father had just graduated the day before. Mm. We had to take the dad through a tunnel to an Emory hospital. And the chaplain I was shadowing panicked and abandoned me in the room. Mm. And I just stayed with the mom. Mm -hmm. As she processed, she couldn't have no more children from her husband. Her, her husband was about six, five, about three forty. She might have been four eleven if she was a hundred. The doctor told her she couldn't have no more of his babies. She almost died with the last because <laughs> it was too big. <laughs> the first two children they had almost killed her. She literally couldn't have any more. Okay. He was going like he was going in the cardiac arrest. Wow. One more. Wow. It was just sick. I remember when father-in-law said to me that he don't remember nothing the chaplain said when Trey died. Nope. But I remember the chaplain just being good. That's it. Yes. Grieving with those who grieve is allowing us to say, I know what pain is. Mm -hmm. My pain is not their pain. So I'm not going to own their pain. But I know pain. Mm -hmm. Because I know what pain is, I'm just going to sit with you. And if tears flow, they flow. You know, I, I had an experience of, of, of a young lady that came to our church and uh, her, her family was with a, a one of our, our uh, church that we fellowship with. And they, they recommended that she come because since she lived here at Tindall Church. And I sat down with her because she had been walking in, in, in sin. I sat down with her after church and we sat down, we talked. We talked in a compassionate, I talked to her in a compassionate way. She was so used to people condemning her until she didn't, she, she didn't know how to receive somebody showing concern and compassion for her. And after we talked for about a, a, probably a good hour after church, the one thing that stuck in my mind that she said to me, she said, I've been around church all my life. I've been with, under different pastors. She said, but you're the first pastor that ever sat down and talk, took the time to talk with me. Wow. That blew my mind. Tears came to my heart because I said, man, that's so hard. Because it's not like some of these churches got thousands of members in it. That the pastor don't have, but even then, sometimes somebody in ministry or Amen. Amen. To talk with people, because sometimes that's all people need is somebody to spend some time with them and it'll draw them to the kingdom. That yeah. young every time she saw me after that, hey Pastor, she would now she didn't keep coming to church, but every time she saw me after that, she would I she would see me and I wouldn't even know that she was there. Hey, Pastor, that's, remember me? Remember me? And I said, yeah, I remember you. But it was so heart-wrenching to hear that as the first time, I thought she had been in church all her life, but as the first time, a pastor took time to sit down and talk with her. And it was just, we weren't talking about a whole lot of stuff, but just with simply talking. She needed somebody to have a listening ear and to share some good night, good words with her. And I can tell... Yeah. In this time right now, in, in this pandemic time, and so many people haven't been been alone for so long or not been right. able to that there's a there's a lot of people that need that right now. And then right. 
that that that's that's what they need from the body is for people to sit down and just talk with them or just listen and yeah. and, and that that's what he mean by this is is uh is that it, empathy as calvin talked about is, mm -hmm. is not just will rejoice in me, that's a good one but then to weep with them that weep the the, the be there for them and so mm -hmm. what he said we got to be there for each other because mm -hmm. because life we live in a broken world sure do we're broken people but we live in a broken world and jesus said we don't have to worry about it because he overcame the world but we still got to go through that's right this journey ain't finished yet and so while we're here we got to deal with it and so we're supposed to help each other deal with it whatever it is we help each other deal with it and, and so that's really what that one's uh coming at so then he, way to that next scripture too lee the, the uh, way we, we, we're talking about this and say right right into that next scripture with, with, Yes, he does, because he says, live in harmony with one another. Live in harmony. That's the first thing he says, live in harmony. Now, uh, notice he didn't say unity. He said, live in harmony. There's a difference in, in, uh, in unity and harmony. Now, uh, you do want to be together, but he said harmony. What that means is, is you can have a difference of opinion, but we can still live with each other. I can live in, I don't have to be disagreeable with you just because we disagree. We can live in harmony. You may not the way I do it, but you, I, I'm okay with the way you do it. Does harmony mean I have to co sign somebody's bad behavior? No. no, it doesn't mean that. No, it doesn't Sometimes mean that. people like that in America that we that like you'll hear people say, no, if you don't like how we do something, we do No, no, that's not what that's saying. Harmony doesn't require me to say everything we do that God ordained. But I can look at scripture and see that it's all out to God's word. Because because in the text, it's the accord with his. That's right. I was going to say, he's already talked about that. So so these things go together. They're not independent. They, right. they go together. And I was going to go right to what you just said. He already <laughs> told you that. It's the, the love what God loves and hate what he hates. The harmony is around God's order. Yes. The, that's where the around God's order. Yeah, so you don't have to be like me, and, and I don't have to be like you, but we can, we want to both be serving the same God, and, 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 and we want to both be acting in a way that's pleasing to God, and even though you do it differently than I do it, it's okay. The, um, I, I got a good example of that, you know, in the choir, to Singing in unison means you you sing one one all the same thing, but when you sing in harmony, you blend it. You, you have to blend in uh, the different notes and different uh, rhythm in order for it to sound good. And that's what that's what uh, walking in harmony with one another is like. Yes. Uh, you may like a very neat and tidy way. I may have a helter skelter way of doing things, but it still gets the work that's done. It's yes. not out of it's not out of God's order. It's not of, it's not against the will of God, but it's just that who my method, who I am, or how I handle things. You may be uh, the the most uh, particular person about something. Yes. It, but I can be one that's not so particular. That does not be, negate uh, me being anything. Uh, I mean, negate my walk before God, but what it does is that we learn to walk in harmony with one another. And you don't necessarily condone in bad behavior. Not saying that you, if some, I'm walking in homosexuality, no, you don't, you don't condone that. You condemn that. But the thing is, you uh, got to learn how to walk in harmony with one another 
when those things that, that we do in the sight of God are not against the will of God, but it's also not the way we see it, because everything we see, the way every oh, yeah. situation we see is not going to always be somebody else's. You can be married and still have two different ways, and but going to bring together. You know, God made each one of us unique. Yes. Unique. Twins are unique. Amen. The identical unique. There's a difference between day and night between my wife and her twin. She's a twin. Amen. But they're they're twins. And then there are times when they both together, they just sit together and be sitting in the room, and all of a sudden they both start laughing and thinking about the same thing. You know, that's twins for you. But here, here's the, the there is uniqueness to each every one, but we all meant to blend together and they work in harmony, and that's how we do it in harmony. Because I don't have to be, you know, I had a brother that in the Lord, Lord that when I first in that church in Madison, we could not agree on anything. We could not agree on anything. And my thing was God changed him. Fix him, Lord. <laughs> but God, God turned me around and fixed me. Amen. And I learned to walk in harmony. Because uh, it was just stress. When the two of us got together, people, were, it got to the point where the saints would go, oh, Lord. Keep Greg over here and keep him over there. <laughs> you know, uh, don't let them go on the same stuff. You know, he sees things different than what I saw things. And I just, you know, it, it, it used to make my skin crawl to, to have to deal with him because he always going to say something, you know, that's going to be controversial against my, what I stand. So what God taught me is how to live in harmony with that person. And, and it, it brought peace in the atmosphere. And I tell you, yes. you know, uh, it was a lot of stress and it took some work because it took some work on me more than so much on him. That's awesome. And that's what he's talking about, that you learn to let him be him and you mm -hmm. still be you and, yeah. and let God handle the rest of it. And that's really what he says. So he says that live with harmony with one another. But then he follows that up. He says, do not be haughty is what this one says. Right. But associate with the lowly. Neither be wise in your own sight. So he says, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. And the uh, King James says it's a di little differently. Is, uh, you want to seek to associate with those. You want to be able to relate with those people that are, that are the least in the, uh, in the society. You don't want to be such that you can only relate to those who are arist aristocrats. Uh -huh. You want to be able to relate to the least in the society. And, and, and you want to walk in a way that, that they feel comfortable relating to you. Mm -hmm. Not just that you relate to them, that they feel comfortable relating to you too. That you're not so high that you can't relate. Uh, uh, Common people never... They can't even relate to a little kid. Common people never had a with Jesus. That's right. The biblical Jesus, not, not, not Jesus that America recreated, the biblical Jesus had a way of walking in the room and could talk to anybody in the room. That's right. Sure. Didn't get offended when anybody was in his presence or touched him. Those that he knew had evil desires, he just called it out. That's right. You <laughs> get all worked up and just get straight up. That's <laughs> right. He, he labeled their fruit appropriate. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and matter of fact, the overwhelming majority of his miracle and his ministry was spent with common people. Right. Yes. The See, least of these. I've heard people tell this that the same people who cried Hosanna cried crucified. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> the crowd that yelled Hosanna, uh -huh. that means yell yeah. help, were those that their systems had destitute. Right. Yes. So, uh, and he said, mm -hmm. the ones who cried crucified were the ones who benefited. 
<laughs> the people who had issues with Jesus were the happy people. Yes. Paul understood that they were being haughty because mm -hmm. he was yeah. <laughs> so he's saying, don't be like that. Mm -hmm. It's not fruitful. He had to, he, and Paul he had to, he had to, his, his, uh, some of his uh, smelling of himself. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had to deal with uh, Peter in that same manner because Peter went when when when, uh, when they were at, with with the Gentiles at a certain time. He got he, he got a little beside himself trying to uh, you know act it all different. And Paul uh, disputed him to the face, it said in the scripture, because he he let him know how you know if God lifted up the yoke off of these people's neck, why are you gonna put a yoke back on them? Why 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 treat them they, these are these are part of the kingdom just like you are. Amen. And, and I guess they brought guilt in people. And that's, that's, that's a common thing for people who hold themselves in high esteem to look down on the, the common man. And, and our society has promoted that for years. Yes. It has promoted that. Yeah, that's how racism continues. That's yes. how prejudice continues, period. Whether it's racism, yes. prejudice, even among the same race. Yes. So we, we, had a, we had a thing where it called certain Black folks that did it, and the yes. folks didn't want to have to do with the common folk. Or they, if they did, they you know this was that thing that has always plagued our society. And Paul is addressing it in his in this sense, and he called it for what it is. Just like you're right, he called it just what it is. <laughs> Don't be high minded. Don't, but rather than sin that you know, get down to people at low. You know something? I've learned to be able to to, to deal with, and I learned from my daddy. My daddy used to walk up the street, and if somebody, even the CEO or something like that, they stop and talk to him. He talked to him for 20 minutes. He didn't have to know their name, but he had the same kind of joy, same kind of love and relationship speaking to them as he would somebody who was a, so they lived on the street. He did the same thing, but only he had, he had a method. And one of the things he always had is telling about what God was doing in his life. Amen. And, and, you know, and, and it has changed. My mom said that that was people that told her after he passed that 10 years later, after they had, he had sold them seed, that, that they were, he was the reason that they were in, in the kingdom of God right there. So it was 10 years later that this guy said that to him. I have dealt with people coming up in the church, and, you know, I just, I just was being who I am and the loving person because I, 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 my first intention is to share, is to have peace and love. That's my first intention. I don't want stress. I don't like confusion. I don't like a lot of, I don't like a lot of pain and hurting people. I don't like hurting words and hurting people. And you know what? Since I have that attitude, uh, it has blessed me to hear that somebody said, hey, you know something? Because of you, now I, you know, I, I have that. I, I learned how to talk to people of different situations, of different, and, and because of you, uh, I, I, I thought that preachers were one of the things that people used to always tell me when they found a preacher at work. They thought preachers would be stoic and sophisticated and sitting hot. They said, "But you're the most jovial, happy preacher I ever seen." I say, well, what am I supposed to be? <laughs> I to, if God changed my life and gave me joy, am I supposed to be mad and angry? He said, yeah, but they, they, they you know, one guy said, but we supposed to be sober minded. You mean I can't be sober and happy too? You mean I, can't, you, I gotta have a, a, a strange look on my face and make people scare people away? Uncle Greg, people don't know what words mean. Huh? <laughs> they don't know what words mean. I know no, we don't. don't. <laughs> and that's not trying to be. No, I don't. I know. You're right. We misdefine so many words. Well, do. And we do it for oftentimes to have a negative impact. Yeah. Who we used to refer 
the Martin Luther King Jr. as a homo sapien. Because small and hateful people mm. and, and they thought derogatory. Mm. Mm. Wow. It's crazy. <laughs> You're right, though. People don't know what that means. Most and that's people. why mm -hmm. preachers, unless you for me, the the mm -hmm. uh, about or something like that. We really, we really need quote, theological dictionaries, mm -hmm. not Webster. Yeah, all right. Because never change its own context. Yeah, they sure do. Yes, and we need to be people the original meaning. They help them understand what the kingdom is about. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes. Dig deep, deep, deeper. That's right. I, I, for me, mm -hmm. I can, I can be, I could be hard to read at times. <laughs> So, Paul can be a little very firm and direct. Mm -hmm. And that can be a fist to people. Yeah. Other countries, they used to. America, we not. Mm. I had to learn how directness can be a bit more. Especially when I deal with people who are like my father in law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My father-in-law blessed me with things. I learned how to be patient, mm -hmm. how to try to redirect my words, uh -huh. and how to be patient enough to hear the long way around it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, so I hear it and not cook. <laughs> I feel being able to, to, to be vulnerable enough to know that mm -hmm. and willing enough to grow in that keeps me from being big headed. Yeah. All right. And dismissive of people who don't see things my way. Yeah. Amen. You know, the scripture even tells us that follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man should see the Lord. And Eric, you know, one of the things that a, a former pastor used to pound that at us, but I've, you know, I've always sought to be peaceful with people because uh, I find uh, I'm happy. I, I have more joy in peace. And so I don't, I don't like a lot of, like I said, I don't like stress and, co and confusion. And so I press my way to be that, you know, I, there are times I'm not, I'm not always jovial, like happy, you know, but. And then, and then when I don't show a lot of smiling, uh, then people find they, they wonder if something's wrong. Ain't nothing wrong. I just maybe a moment I'm just thinking about something and stuff, something weighing on my, my mind, my spirit. But uh, for the most part, I'm a happy person, a mature for person. And I don't let people uh, put me down because of that, because joy, God is the one that gave me this joy. Hello. I remember Hello. a time when I was miserable. I remember a time when I th I was just down and out, and they couldn't find no peace, and I don't care who, who talked to me or whatever people said. I remember a time when nobody even wanted to take time with me. So, you know, something <laughs> when God put this joy in me, I, I'm not worried about what other people see. That is, uh, no, I'm, I'm very careful of not throwing something the wrong message to people. But I'm not worried about what people think and feel about, about who I am because I, I've come to know that God made me who I am for a purpose. And my purpose, I'm going to work to live out this purpose in this life while I got this life. Praise God. <laughs> and I think that that too is part of what this scripture is, is what Paul's yes. wanting us to recognize that no matter who the person is, God right. made them too. And, and and so and he didn't. And he doesn't see us as one better than the other. God made them too. We all ha have the same fallen condition and in need of the same Savior. So God mm -hmm. made them too, and so He can save them just like He saved you. If 
W.E. was understood. This piece of scripture talking about haughtiness. Uh huh. He would have. He would have took the job. He had been hired to teach at Tuskegee. Was on his way to teach at Tuskegee. Somewhere or another, somebody talked with him and said, "You, the first person of African descent with a PhD from Harvard, are going to go teach at this school." And by that, the fool. Mm -hmm. And their relationships. Mm -hmm. Booker T. Washington wrote to his assistant one time If we wanted to kill the voices influence on the people, all we have to do is sit and speak to them. Both of them had went to the same town in Texas. The boys started out with an audience of 10,000. When he finished his speech, it wasn't a hundred people left. Because mm. he mm. was out to him. Booker T. Washington, they, they lost count at 50,000. Folk were coming from other towns to hear him speak. Wow. Because he could speak to everybody in the army. Mm. White and black. All right. Hateful or unhateful. All right. He could take one speech and speak to all of them. Mm -hmm. He didn't think himself better than him. There you go. He think <laughs> himself is better. Yeah. And it drew. And that's what Paul is telling them. The other one thought he was better than some people. To the point where he wouldn't let his daughter marry a football player at this whom she loved mm. and made her marry the poet who took his lover on their honeymoon. Wow. All because he was hot. Divorce, you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was a very intelligent brother. Yeah. <laughs> now, at the end of his life, he realized the error in that. And that's the last part of what he says, never be wise in your own sight. Mm -hmm. You got to know that whatever you know, it ain't that much. And I, I like the one you picked, Booker T. Washington, and the, all of the things that he invented, over 300 inventions that he could have patented. He didn't patent any of them because he said it was gifts that God gave to him to share with others. And so... George Washington. George Washington. Talk. George Washington. George Washington Carver, you mean? Yeah, I mean George Washington Carver, yeah. yeah. George Carver drove Booker T. Washington crazy. Yeah. He never gave his paychecks unless he was going to do something for school. Because he, he didn't see, he, he, he didn't never think he was all of that. He, 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 he saw everybody as being the same as him. So Paul teaches us Mm -hmm. to be one with each other. If we are God's kingdom, or, or since we in America don't understand kingdom, God's social order. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, if I can be a blessing to lead, I should be. If I can be a blessing to drag my gun, mm -hmm. I should be, because we are all in God. Yes. And, and my education don't make me better than the person who don't have education. Amen. Doesn't make me better than the person who 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 um, is a plumber. And Amen. Has more resources than me. Mm -hmm. We look down on people because of our social contract. And none of those have anything to do with the kingdom of God. Sure does. <laughs> God does not have classes in his kingdom. He doesn't have uh, an A list and a B list. All he got is children. He doesn't even have grandchildren and great grands. All he got is children. So we're and all... God's and children. A special place in the kingdom. 
Say what? And the preacher don't have a special place. <laughs> hey, man. Man. Never sit at the head table to eat. That's yeah, right. <laughs> yes, right. Everybody's going to be at the same table. <laughs> yeah, the wedding feast, he called every guest, and they don't specify what guest this place. And, uh, when they give the parable of the wedding feast, he just said guest. And those that, that refused, he, then he told them to go out and, and, and to the hedges and byways and compel them to come because the, first he invited those that were familiar and they yes. rejected. And they reject uh, one hand excuse. Everyone had an excuse, but the ones that that really and that's the amazing thing you said about come. It went right to the common people, those that that really was lacking and that, that didn't have everything what other people had. Those are the ones that he called the, the, the draw to the his, his uh, feast, and those are the ones that came. It's because they weren't so caught up in themselves that they could see the value in what he was offering. And and that that is that that that's one of the challenges that uh, people. And that's why he talked about the rich. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very difficult for them to get into heaven. He didn't say that was because of their money. It's because they 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 so caught up in themselves that they can't see their need. And yeah. you got to actually see your need for for God before you actually can come to Him. Because he's he's not going to come down to you. You got to come. You got to get, get down and come to him. You got to come humbly and, and in order to receive him. Yeah, you sure do. You have to come up to him. That's right. Yes. And so, so, so he, he's wanting us to know the bless and not the curse, mm -hmm. to rejoice with, well, with those who rejoice, but to be willing to weep with those who weep and then to have harmony. Because mm -hmm. community is important to God. And when community oh, yeah. meaning that we all live together in harmony, that we, uh, uh, notice he didn't say unity, he said harmony. There is a, a place in unity in the body, meaning mm -hmm. that we all are on one accord. But that doesn't mean we all have the same thought. And, and it's because we are different, that's why he used that word harmony. We want to, and then not to be haughty, to, to actually, that because pride goes before the fall is part of and that haunted spirit is a, a prideful spirit it says it lifts you up instead mm -hmm. of lifting god up and so and it, it recognizes you more than it recognizes god so whatever we have is because god gave it to us so mm -hmm. blessed us from him and if he blessed us he blessed us to be a blessing so we're supposed to be blessing others and that's always been one of God's rule is that we bless other people. So, so we have right. nothing to brag about because whatever we got, we got from him. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when David, after he had given all of that, uh, and they, they made that huge offering to, to uh, create the temple. That's mm -hmm. what he says. And he says that all of the things that we've given, they came from you to begin with. That's right. It's, 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 and so whatever we've given, no matter how elaborate, and, and it goes on to talk about how he, how elaborate their gifts were and how big it was. He says, no matter what we gave, it was we we we, we was uh it was already yours. Whatever we're giving back to you was already yours. It was yours to start with. So we just thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to be a part of the process. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that idea that he stayed humble helped him to be king because the king he replaced was somebody who, who got haughty and started thinking everything was about them, him instead of everything being about God. And then that happens to us when we, when we start to get haughty. We, everything becomes about us when it really should have been about God. About God, that's true. You, you know, when you talk about harmony, I thought about Ten Commandments. They were to teach your people how to live in harmony with one another. Amen. <laughs> if I don't steal, if I don't covet my neighbor's stuff, if I commit adultery with my neighbor's wife, if I don't harm his children, mm -hmm. or her children, they have no reason to lie. 
Amen. 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 It is constant loving God first. Yes. Because if I love God first, something in my mind will say, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So well, love God, God and then let that oh. love overflow to your, to your neighbor. Jesus said, if you have two in your brother, you want to give him one. That's hard. Amen. 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 Notice what you said. If I have two and my brother have, have none, I give him one of mine. That's all right, yeah. it, 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 but that's that's one of those things that, that was part of, of, of what God teaches that we seem to have lost. Because mm -hmm. well, uh, I, I got mine, I didn't, they need to get their own. I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. Not that God blessed me, not that God made this happen for me, that yeah. I did it. It, it. It's all about me and not about him. Well, if, if Jesus told a woman with two, what does he say about Bill Gates? <laughs> what does he say about Jeff Bezos? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's supposed to be about God because it's what God did and not what I did. Yeah. In this, but we are a Christian nation. <laughs> we like to say that. <laughs> and we and we talk about, we talk down to those <laughs> that the government, if it's a person in the government, do something to help them. In America. <laughs> and in fact, we complain, mm. uh, even though whatever we gave to the government to be able to give to them was a small portion of what we had, we complain that the government, and even, first of all, it shouldn't have had to come to the government doing it. We should have been blessing them ourselves so that the he's, government shouldn't have had to do it. In arms to countries like Israel than we do to the citizens who pay the taxes in the first place. Yeah. We give more for bonds yeah. than we do for me. They sure do. We do. See, so it shows that we have we are not in harmony with one another. Right? Amen. Or we wouldn't do it. So Paul us on this Christian nation. What 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 the, the idea of community, I like of what you what you mentioned about idea of community throughout the Bible, throughout everything that Jesus teaches, he's teaching about that idea, that harmony, that community. Because uh, bless them that, that, that persecute you. Uh, you know, bless are the peaceful makers and di different things that he speaks. All of that has to do with the, the community that, that God intend to build in his kingdom. And, and that's, you know, even the things that Jesus taught. If your brother sin against you 70 times, 70 in one day, you, you yeah. forgive him. Right? And, that, and, you know, if a brother is sinning against me two times in one day, it's hard for me, but... <laughs> It's seven times seven, you know. My God, that's a long, that's a whole lot of forgiveness. But that's community, that's it. And it has to do with his grace, his mercy, his compassion. And it's and all a part of what God is to us and how he is with us. And he, that's why Peter was able to say, he has given unto us all things. Notice that all things that pertain to life and godliness. All things, and then go down and tell us how to do, how to obtain it. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and knowledge temperance, and all those things like that. They make you so that you shall never fall. Praise God when He does go to He does in, does in first, second Peter, first chapter, uh, verse three, all the way down to verse ten. And, and when I think about those things, that's what He's been trying to build. It causes the build is the community. Loving for one another, being of one another, lifting up, building up one another, abhorring that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Amen. You know, whatever things are pure, whatever things are righteous, whatever things are good report, think Thank on God. these things. Make it merry in your heart and sins and hymns and praises to God. You know, all that has to do with community. And he did it through several writers, writers. And it's still, it's still resonated through, no matter whether it's Paul, Peter, 
John or James, he resonates the same message throughout all of them. And that's the that's the danger of the personal piety mm -hmm. soul salvation that eliminates the communal aspect that we teach. It's communal. It's, 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 it's a communal walk. Mm -hmm. It's personal and it's communal. Amen. And we have to live it out. And we can't sacrifice one for the other. Right. Amen. And, and 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 we're gonna have to round it up, but it's it, it's about us, actually about who we and Paul is focusing on us being that body, being that kind of person, and that and these these things that he talks about are difficult because you can't do it without Christ. That's and right. so, in order for us to be able to do this, we have to have Christ be a part of us. And, and he talked about being a, a living sacrifice. We got to let daily allow him to be him through us in order for us to do that. We're going to have to wind it up because we're out of time tonight, but we'll be back next week and uh, we're, we're going to get a few more tough things and, and, and uh, we're going to see what God has to say about why we can we can deal with all of this. And, and so uh, we, we, we may get a chance to wrap it up uh, for this uh, Romans and we, we may look at one or two other scriptures briefly before the end of the month. So thank everybody for coming and uh, participating. And if yeah. you have any questions, go ahead and send them to us. And uh, I, I'll put out my email again. I didn't have it ready for tonight, but you can email it to me or email it to the church and, and we'll answer your question. We'll be glad to address your questions. We enjoy questions. So got a question or a comment that you want to share with us, send it to us. So somebody to close us out with a word of prayer. Brother Calvin. I'm trying to do this without Anna's participation. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you God for the privilege of speaking your word. God, we ask that you bless every home that will encounter this Bible study. We ask that you bless every represented on this Bible study. And God, we ask that you let us live out the faith. God, your word calls for a living sacrifice. And you can't live it in this community. So God, help us walk in harmony in our community. Yes, help Lord. us be beacons of light that help people find your holy family. Yes, God, help us exemplify your excellence. Bless us. Glory to God. That we may be blessings to, your, to others. And that yes, your is multiplied. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Well, thank you for another wonderful uh, time in the study of the word.